Welcome back to Chaos Corner. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. Another impromptu Chaos Corner here in the lounge at Chaos Headquarters. Fans, you're not going to want to miss this episode of Chaos Corner. A retro review, if you will, going back 37 years ago when I was a mere 23 years old. Follow me on all social media platforms, and you know what they are. Here on the Guardian of Chaos YouTube channel. Follow me in real time on Twitter, at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. On Facebook, I have two accounts. I know, it's confusing. J Brony. That's right, Jabroni. J Brony. And Protigio Fidelis El Guardian. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, Rumble. I cover it all in the IWC, especially here on Guardian of Chaos. As I said, the YouTube channel. We're coming up on almost 1,000 subscribers. We have well over 300,000 views, over 2.2 thousand videos here on the channel. That's what you get. I bring you into my headquarters to my podcast, to my home, to my talk show, to my reality TV. That's what this channel is. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog. No paywalls, no super chats, no Patreon, none of the above. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button, and it's free because it's me, the GOC. Fans, what we're going to cover here today from the old AWA, who I was fortunate enough to work for back in the late 90s and early 2000s, Wrestle Rock 86. That's right, Wrestle Rock 86 from the Metro Dome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where they had over 23,000 fans for this huge event. Come on back. We're jumping off all the other social media platforms. All right, fans, thanks for being back here. We're here early on a stormy Friday morning. The thunderstorms, the lightning, the floods, the heat. Everyone stay safe. Stay close to your family and friends and your loved ones. Tomorrow's not guaranteed for anyone or any of us. There's a lot of craziness going on in this world. I don't have to tell you that. Let's stay aware. Let's stay prepared. Let's do our very best and walk with the big man. Because without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be here. None of you would be here. Because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. And that's a shoot. That's a work. Well, no, wait. I think I did the same thing yesterday. That's not a, a work. It's a shoot. So walk in faith as I put out in all seriousness from the bottom of my heart. Not only thank you for being here on this channel but for listening to the messages that I put out, not only about pro wrestling, sports entertainment, so on and so forth, but faith. Because without that, we have nothing. Let's remember that. As I can hear the thunder booms now in the greater New England tri-state northeast area in the shadows of Titan Towers. Fans, I've been pumping out the content like you wouldn't believe. Right now, on the big screen here in the lounge, with Scott Ledoux as the special guest. No, no, wait. Scott Ledoux is in this bout because it was a boxing match against Larry Zabisco. Who's the referee? Okay, that is Larry the Axe Henning. And Ledoux was one tough son of a bitch back in the days. And this was a special bout between Zabisco and Ledoux. Both wearing the gloves and going at it. I'm not going to cover everything here on Wrestle Rock 86. There were 16 matches on this event. 16? What are we watching? 2023 AEW? This card was well over three hours, but a solid event. And I'm only going to cover a couple of the bigger matches here, but I will give you the results and, and the rundown. And remember one thing about the AWA back then. Now we're going back to 86 when there was the NWA, the WWF, and AWA were the, the three big ones, the three major ones. Yeah, you can count all Japan and New Japan, but that's over in the Far East and in the, in the Orient. Uh, it's not here in the United States. It's in the land of the rising sun, so back for the time. 
And think about this for the AWA with over 23,000 fans at the Metro Dome, which now Minnesota is a shithole. But back then it was a stronghold for pro wrestling and especially the AWA. And let's look at the history of the grapplers and famous wrestlers that have come out of Minnesota. Everyone from Rick Rue to Kurt Henning to the Road Warriors. I can go on and on with the list of guys that were trained by Vern Gagne and went through the AWA. And, and this show in particular, as, as I go through my notes and do my little bit of research, because I watched this at 23 years old, uh, this was on closed circuit, I believe, or I caught the replay, but they pumped this out on TV for quite some time leading into this. And here are the matchups. Well, first, I want to give a few notes. This was the final stadium show for the AWA in 1986. And remember, it wasn't much longer after that where the 86, you know, got raided by Vince and uh, all the talent, and uh, as did the NWA, uh, raided the AWA. And they were a, a stronghold as the third biggest, maybe even the second biggest at one time. And again, final stadium show for the AWA here in 86. In this show, Wrestle Rock 86 outdrew both Jim Crockett Promotions Crockett Cup combined both shows. Let that sink in. Let that marinate. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Speaking of putting that in your pipe and smoke it and, and, and healing and wellness and purity and clarity, I want to give a big shout out and speckle, special recognition to my one and only true sponsor who's been here with me from day one, and that would be Mr. Hempel Stillskin. That's right, Mr. Hempel Stillskin over at Sweet Heel CBD. That's right, C Sweet Heel CBD. Sweetheel.com, sweetheelcbd.com. And you know I'm rumbling, stumbling, getting tongue tied, twisted. And you guys know that you like it when that happens. It's early in the morning. I, listen, I haven't even started the espresso yet. So remember what Bully Ray from uh, Busted Open After Dark from Busted open radio in the morning show with LaGreca and Dreamer and, and, and everyone else that's on there as co-host with Bully Ray. A two-time Hall of Famer, perhaps one of the greatest tag teams of all time in the Dudley Boys, Team 3D. Back in 06 and 07, when I was still active as a pro wrestling manager in this industry, over three decades, when I was managing the Outcast Killers, Oman Tortuga, Diablo Santiago. Listen to the thunder. I don't know if you could hear it. Against Team 3D for the NWA World Tag Team titles. A series of tables matches. Bully Ray got me back into the dressing room. And again, I took some good maneuvers from, from uh, Devon and Bully Ray. Love those guys. What professionals. Perhaps one of the greatest of all time. He said, give the Guardian of Chaos Big Daddy five spots and he'll fuck up for them. I consider that to be a compliment coming from someone like Bully Ray. I mean, let's face it. So... I just want you guys to know, if you follow me here on the show, this is what I do all the time. I, I, when it's one man, unique, unedited, unscripted, as I said, raw dog, and you make it relatable and you continue to talk because this is what you do for a, for a living and for your work. And this is what you do on your channel to try to give back. And that's a stress reliever for the fans, for you guys, and for me in this crazy world. It's not as easy as it looks or sounds to continue to be one man and work and break things down and make it explainable and make it relatable to you, the fans, so you can understand what the fuck I'm talking about. So again, those are the news and notes. Your announcer for this uh, event, AWA, uh, Wrestle Rock 86, again, uh, over 23,000 fans, one of the biggest shows for the time. Ring announcer, Gary Michael Capetta. And the reason why I bring that up, not only do I have... Uh, his book and, and is Gary Michael Capetta, class personified. He was also inducted into the same Hall of Fame class as I was, along with Bill Apter, uh, Gary Michael Capetta, uh, Romeo Rosselli and Antonio Thomas from the, the heartthrobs of the WWE, and so on and so forth. Uh, what an incredible class. And yours truly, the class of 2019 New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, if you go back and you look at the people in the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, it's a who's who uh, in pro wrestling. It, it really is. It's something to believe uh, and to behold. And also, to be inducted into the Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, the class of 2020, 
with legends like Paul Roma, Mario Mancini, Paul Perez, Big Dave Paradise, four men that worked under the guidance of the WWF, and Roma also worked for the NWA, a.k.a. WCW. Think about that. So I couldn't be more humble, proud, and honored to be a part of those Hall of Fames. And so just to give you a little rundown, if you, again, if you guys follow me here, you know what's going on. We're 10 minutes in here in my opening monologue and, and to give you the breakdown of AWA Wrestle Rock. And then I'm going to cover a couple of major bouts here. But here's basically run, the rundown. I left out a couple of uh, matches and results because one of the guys was a piece of shit. Uh, uh, Buck Zumhoff. I don't even want to give him any credit and mention his name and give him a rub. But he got his ass kicked in the AWA Wrestle Rock uh, 86 by Tiger Mask. Konnichiwa, bitches. Unbelievable Japanese grappler. But Buck Zumhoff, no one knew it back then. What a piece of shit you turned out to be, huh, Zumhoff? So I'm not going to mention his results, although I just did. Here we go. USA Olympian, Greco-Roman Olympian, Brad Rangins went over the Russian madman with that huge dome, Boris Zukov. Colonel De Beers from South Africa, and they played up his whole supremacy thing back in 86 and how wrestling, whether it was Vince or the AWA, crossing that line of what's going on socially. You look at the Iron Sheik, Sergeant Slaughter, so on and so forth. Colonel De Beers along the same line. Sheik Adnan Al Casey. This is history. We can go back to Waldo Von Erich, Fritz Von Erich, Spiros Arion. The, the, the villains from the day from foreign countries. So Colonel De Beers over former Miami Dolphin and New York Jet, uh, one of the greatest uh, greatest Native American grapplers in the history of this country, Wahoo McDaniel. It was a disqualification, and the Wahoo beat his ass all over the Metro Dome uh, uh, during Wrestle Rock. But the Beers did go over Wahoo McDaniel by disqualification. A very underrated tag team, Buddy Rose. That's right, Buddy Rose, not 270 pounds, 217 pounds. Buddy Rose and Pretty boy, Doug Summers, over the Midnight Rockers. That's right. Party Marty Janetti and uh, Shawn Michaels. Long before they hit the WWF, the Midnight Rockers lost to Playboy Buddy Rose and Pretty Boy Doug Summers, who I actually liked as a tag team back in the day. Also, Barry Windham. Mike Rotunda over the fabulous ones, Stan Lane and Steve Kern. Again, you could look at the different gentlemen and grapplers and professionals and talent. I don't really want to say gentlemen that were on this roster. And they were from the, from the NWA and some went on to the WWF and so on and so forth. As you can see, uh, Wyndham and Rotunda teaming up in the AWA to defeat the fabulous ones at Wrestle Rock. Also, here at Wrestle Rock, as I'm watching here again, unbelievable. Go back and check it out. As Larry the Axe Henning raises the hand of Scott Ledoux, who uh, went over by disqualification in the boxing match against uh, the future living legend in Larry Zabisco. So that's what we're on here, right here, as I give you the results. Uh, Giant Baba was also on this card, and he went over on Bulldog Brown. Here was another great match of legends. Harley Race and Rick Martell went to a double disqualification at Wrestle Rock 86. Picture that. Harley Race and Martell. What a matchup. And the 10 Women Battle Royal. Sherry Martell, sensational Sherry, scary Sherry, whatever you want to call her. She was the winner of the 10 Women Battle Royal. I believe the final two were Sherry and Luna Vachon. Sergeant Slaughter, that's right, Sarge, you know what he went on to do in the WWF, and we talk about different gimmicks in USA and so on and so forth, and Slaughter and his career. Uh, yes, I've also been across the ring with my men uh, from Slaughter a couple of times. Sergeant Slaughter went over on Kamala with Skandor Akbar, uh, you know, the camel jockey, camel toe jockey. I don't want to get crazy here. And that was for the AWA America's title. Slaughter becomes the AWA America's champion over Kamala the Ugandan giant with Skandor Akbar. 
Scott Hall and Kurt Henning. Again, you see there were a lot of tag team matches on this event. It was a huge event. Again, 16 matches, 23,000 people. Hall and Henning over the long riders. Scott and Bill Irwin. That's right. Hog Irwin and Cowboy. Uh, I think he was called. What was he called? Cowboy Bill Irwin? The Long Riders. One hell of a tag team back in the day. Although uh, Scott Irwin turned out to be a little... <laughs> seen him in some current interviews. And that was for the AWA tag team titles. So Hall and Henning, before he went on to be Razor Ramon and so on and so forth, uh, Machismo Chico, they won the AWA tag team titles over the Long Riders. We said Ledoux over Zabisco in a special boxing match. And right now we're getting ready for it. I don't want to spoil it. Because here we go. As he's beating Lee Marshall ringside. It's the crazy man from Borger, Texas. Stan the Lariat Hansen, Taking on the AWA World Heavyweight Champion. Class personified. Perhaps one of the classiest guys in pro wrestling. And he's got the bullwhip himself. Nick Bockwinkle. This is going to be a banger. As the kids say here in 2023. Fans, let's go back. I gave you some of the results. And I'm going to sit here and review Nick Bockwinkle, the AWA heavyweight champion against the madman from Borger, Texas, Stan, the Lariat, Hanson. For the AWA heavyweight title, the bell hasn't rang yet. And then we're going to go on to cover the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk, against the fabulous Freebirds in a steel cage match. I believe it was... Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin. I'm not sure if Terry Gordy was ringside or Buddy Jack Roberts was there from the rest of the Freebirds. But that is for, that's not for the titles. It's in the steel cage match. And then also there was another steel cage match. Vern Gagne, that's right, the old man, one of the toughest sons of bitches and toughest trainers in the history of pro wrestling, went over on Sheik Adnan Alkaz. Alkaz. In a steel cage match. Say that three times fast as Lee Marshall's trying to shake the cobwebs from getting the boots put to him by Stan Hansen. That's right, Vern Gagne was on this show and went over on Sheik Adnan Al KC in a steel cage match. Two cage matches. So, fans, sit back, relax, and here we go. Stan the Larry Hansen, Nick Bockwinkle for the world heavyweight title. Let me see if I can get a little volume. No copyrights. We don't want to screw with the algorithm. I don't own any of this shit, man. And I apologize for cussing. I think I did like five times now. I'm going to have to put money in the tip jar for my granddaughter. Uh, God bless everyone out there. Sit back. I'm going to have some coffee right now with a little shot of espresso. I believe it's hazelnut with espresso. Side headlock. There's the bell. Side headlock by Hanson on Bockwinkle. Right away from the beginning of the bell, Hanson throws Bockwinkle outside. Now here we go. It's breaking down. It's a Pier 6 brawl. Right from the rip. Right from the beginning. Here in the AWA, Wrestle Rock 86 with the GOC. It's not Borges, Texas, Lee Marshall. It's Borger, Texas. Wait, that's Lee Marshall and Rod Trongard. Talk about that for a duo behind the booth. Slugging it out right now. Bockwinkle laying in the rights to the jib, the forehead, the dome piece of Stan Hansen. Far side in the turnbuckle. A big boot to the big section by Hansen. Bockwinkle took his time trying to get into the corner. Nice snap mare by Hansen. And a big elbow across the uh, left shoulder of Bockwinkle. Turning into a rear chin lock. Clamping it down. Wearing his opponent down. Sucking the air out of Nick Bockwinkle. As Bockwinkle's trying to grab the face and the eyes of Stan Hansen. What a classic matchup. With two legends and Hall of Famers. And the Metro Dome, even though it had 23,000 people for this event, it holds a lot of people. The place looks half empty. Again, this was the last stadium show in 86. The last stadium show for AWA in general. My guy saw, oh, big knee to the Labans, the Ponzone of Stan Hansen. Bockwinkle and Hansen going back and forth. Hansen whips Bockwinkle to the ropes. Big back elbow. Uh, Hansen with a couple of kicks to Bockwinkle's chest. And now another snap mare goes for the elbow and lands on Bockwinkle, who tried to roll out of the way. Here's the cover. Here's the pin. He doesn't hook the leg. Come on, Hansen. You're not going to pin Bockwinkle that way. Front chancery by Hansen. Nice reversal by Bock, uh, Bockwinkle. Both men on the back, uh, on the mat now. Bockwinkle with a nice hammer lock on Hanson. Tying him up in the middle of the ring. 
with that beautiful AWA logo right in the middle. The espresso's got me banging. Now, how about yesterday? Guys, go back and... Uh, I did a, a full review the day after of AEW Dynamite from the previous night. So that's up on the channel. I did it in segments each match. I had a lot of fun. The espresso really had me banging yesterday. I'm just getting into it now. Yesterday we were here early in the morning. We're here early again today. It's uh, 8, 8.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's dark and ominous outside. Big body slam by Hanson on Bockwinkle. Throws him around like a child and then drops that knee across the chest. Here's the cover. Again, Hanson, he's not a technical guy. He's a monster. We know that. He's a beast. Not hooking the leg. You're not going to win that way, Hanson. Off the ropes goes Bockwinkle. Oh, sunset flip by Bockwinkle. Here's the cover. Two count. Beautiful sunset flip. Nice arm drag by Bockwinkle. Matt Technician personified. Think of the team back in the 80s of Nick Bockwinkle, Crippler Ray Stevens, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Think of that ilk. Because I believe they were tag team. Let me go, you know, we're going back 36 years here. And let's not forget IWC, for those of you that are out here, 20 minutes in here on a Chaos Corner. Let's not forget that Stan Hansen also broke Bruno San Martino's neck. The big matches at Shea Stadium, Madison Square Garden. Does it get better than that? The Bruno and Hansen feud. And then, of course, what Hansen went on to do in Japan. What a legend. He had the Japanese running for their lives like he was Godzilla back in the day. Bruiser Brody, too. Holy cromoly, what about that for a tag team? Brody and Hanson, they destroyed Japan. Like Ghidra, uh, Mothra, uh, Godzilla, King Kong. Unbelievable back in the day, right? Am I, am I right? Here, are you guys catching the drift? You younger generation guys, you may not get this. Do your research. Do your due diligence. Hanson tying up Bockwinkle right now in the middle of the ring. Again, from reverse chin lock suffocating right now putting it on Bachwinkle as big as Hansen was back then and then laying in the forearm blows to the chest of Nick Bachwinkle now Bachwinkle was in good shape what do you think Bachwinkle was about 6'2 240 it was in great shape and what's Stan Hansen every bit of 6'4 300 pounds and remember something about Hanson. He also delivered not only that lariat, but those elbows were huge. And he could, again, not technical, but he could get on the mat and grapple if he had to. And that's what he's doing right now. They're going back and forth between Bockwinkle with uh, hammer locks and arm locks and uh, snap mares. And now uh, a couple of kicks and boots by Bockwinkle, who's gotten back to his feet on Stan Hanson. Both men going back and forth right here, but I'll give the edge to Hanson if we were doing this on points right now. He has Bachwinkle in the corner. Big right knees to the abdomen, midsection, if you will, of uh, Nick Bachwinkle. I'm not sure if you can hear Trongard and Lee Marshall. Oh, nice reversal. Sleeper hold by Bachwinkle on Hanson out of the corner. He's got him in the middle of the ring. Is the big man going to go out? Now they're both men are on their knees, but Bachwinkle's got him now. Bachwinkle's standing over him. He's sinking in that sleeper hold. You gotta check for a chokehold on this. You gotta check. You gotta check. The sleeper's legit. It works. It'll put you to sleep. Ask some of the UFC guys. Get into one of them brawls out in the street, lock somebody up, or get caught in it. If you don't tuck and turn, you're done within three seconds. Tuck and turn. Tuck and turn. Always remember that. That's what you get under my tutelage and my over three decades as a pro wrestling manager. Oh, both men dumped outside the ring. Bachwinkle and Hanson go through the middle of the ropes. Out to the floor here at the Hubert Humphrey Metro Dome. Hanson throws Bachwinkle head first into the wooden steps. No steel steps like it is here in 2023. Wooden steps back in the day. Now, uh, Hanson's on the ring apron. Okay, Bockwinkle's standing outside, but Hanson is choking him from the side of the apron as, as Bockwinkle's laying up there against the apron outside the ring. Is that a good visual? <laughs> I don't think it is. 
All right, both men back up in the ring, ringside, on the apron. Hanson tries to post Bachwinkle. Bachwinkle box, uh, blocks it off with a couple of rights to the forearm. Both men exchanging back and forth, rights and lefts, to the abdomen, to the face, to the forearm, to the jib, to the lapons, to the dome piece. Uh, it's, wait, uh, Bachwinkle laying him in in the corner. Big right hands. This match has been all over the place thus far. Hanson out of nowhere picks up Bachwinkle like a child and drops him head first, throat first across the top rope. And remember with the rope. Steel coil, steel cable. Here's the pin by Hanson. Only a two count and Hanson kicks out. Great ring awareness right by the bottom rope, right by the ropes there by Bachwinkle. Oh, Hanson trying to hook under. Looks like he's going for a vertical suplex here on Bachwinkle. Bachwinkle blocks it. Both, uh, and Bachwinkle gets up the big man for Borger. Beautiful suplex by Bachwinkle. Nice reversal. Here's the cover. Two and three quarters. I guess you could listen to Tron Garden Marshall. From pillar to post, coast to coast, and border to border. Remember, this is 37 years ago. Again, nice backbreaker. Beautiful by Hanson. I seem to be a step ahead of these announcers, whether it's AEW, WWE, or back here on the Retro Reviews. Big back body drop by Bachwinkle on Hanson. Here's the cover. Again, neither one of them. Bachwinkle for being the legendary champion, the class personified that he was trained. Bachwinkle picks up Hanson, a big body slam. Neither one of these guys are going for the hook when it goes for the cover. How many times do you see somebody win without hooking a leg? And now Bachwinkle slams Hanson again, but he hits the referee. The referee's out. It's it. He's out. How about Bachwinkle picking up the 300-pounder twice for two body slams? Bachwinkle's checking on the ref. Hanson's up out of nowhere, nimble as a minx like a cat and a big man. Double axe handle. Whips Bachwinkle across the ropes. Well, body press by Bachwinkle out of nowhere. Hanson kicks up because the ref is still on Queer Street. He's in big trouble. He's on his heels. He's reeling. He's dazed. He's confused. Hanson goes for a roll-up. No, Bonson. Uh, Bachwinkle backs him off. Hanson is in the middle of the ring. Bachwinkle with a drop kick out of nowhere. <laughs> this is pro wrestling. Bachwinkle setting up Hanson. Go for the pile driver. Is he going to hit the pile driver? He's got the big man up and he hits the pile driver on Hanson. Here's the cover. No ref. No ref. It looks like Hanson would have kicked up on the two count anyway. The ref is still down and out. Bachwinkle with some big forearm blows to the back of uh, Hanson. And Hanson throws Bachwinkle over the top rope. Hanson with a back body drop, throws Bachwinkle over the top rope, and that's it, disqualification. Remember, back in the day when the rules were real and the wrestling was much better, it was fate was alive. You go over the top rope, that's it, disqualification. Stan, the Lariat Hanson, has been disqualified against Nick Bachwinkle. Bachwinkle retains the AWA Heavyweight Championship, and here's Gary Michael Capetta. Let's go back up to ringside. What a match! Wow, Hanson and Bachwinkle, Wrestle Rock 86, Chaos Corner. That's right, it's a disqualification. Over the top rope. I don't think they do it nowadays. As a matter of fact, I know they don't. Let's listen to Gary Michael Capetta. Wait, Hanson's going after Bachwinkle. Let's break it down. And Capetta's out of the ring. You'll hear no announcement by Capetta. Both men, you hear the bell. Both men going back and forth, exchanging rights, lefts. It's a slobber knocker. Thanks, JR. Uh, these guys aren't giving up. The champ, Bachwinkle. Now he's cleaning the clock of Hanson. Hanson down on the apron, rolling out of the ring. That's it. Hanson's taking a powder and Bachwinkle's left in the ring. Hanson throwing chairs into the ring. What the heck? Wait, are we going to go to Capetta or what? Hanson outside of the ring. It's, it's pure chaos, and that's pun intended. And Hanson, who? Was there a better big man than Stan Hansen? Bachwinkle still in the ring. We're waiting for Gary Michael Capetta. Hansen's coming back. He's got that cowbell. Well, 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 listen to the fans. Everybody's gathered around there at the Hewitt Humphrey Metrodome in Minnesota. Hansen's getting back in the ring. Hansen's getting back in the ring. Bachwinkle's got the chair. 
And Hanson's got the AWA Heavyweight Championship belt. You may have won the wait, wait. Award, but I won the war. I have the trophy that goes only to the champion. Hanson is the AWA Heavyweight title at this time, the champion? I should have did a little more due diligence. I'm always breaking you guys' boss out there in your stones or, or with the women, with your boobs. I'm always breaking them off on you guys. They're jazzing you, joshing you, ribbing you. I kind of missed this one. Stan Hansen was the AWA heavyweight champion during Wrestle Rock 86, not Bachwinkle. So Hansen retains the title, not Bachwinkle. Now you can understand what Bully Ray said when he said, Give the. Here's Capetta. All right, we knew that. Thank you, Gary Michael Capetto, my fellow classmate. Now, here's classmate. Here's Lee Marshall with Bachwinkle ringside. He's got a bull whip, Bachwinkle. Was Lee Marshall underrated? But you know something? You did what you had to do. You accused me of doing the same in the past, and I have. But did you see? I never blew my mouth off the way you did. I never told the world how great Texas was and what you could do. I just told you what I would do. And in some place along the line, you know and I know that the championship committee is going to look upon this match. They're going to look at the results. The championship and committee. Say, Hanson, you've got to get back into the ring. With Bachwinkle. You know what happens? I'm going to be waiting there at my phone, at my door for the telegram, whatever it takes to get that okay. You know you have not gotten rid of me. I'm on your case. Bachwinkle. The words from Bachwinkle, who was not the AWA World Heavyweight Champion, Stan Hansen was. But let me tell you what, guys, how about that uh, for a match? Now, we're 30 minutes in here. We're going to cover another bout once we get through uh, the BS here on the channel. We're going to, uh, coming up next is Vern Gagne in a steel cage against Sheik Adnan Al KC. We're going to fast forward through that on this live to tape watch along. Again, 16 matches, almost four hours. Uh, I wasn't going to go through, I gave you the results at the beginning here. But I really want to cover two of the greatest tag teams of all time. Two tag teams that I have a connection with from my past and had a chance to, to hang out with uh, before and uh, be in the same company before, even travel together before. So I'm humbled and honored by that. So we're going to cover the steel cage match between the Road Warriors and the Fabulous Freebirds. And I <laughs> so now... There's Sheik Adnan Al KC, and it looks like it's Nord the Barbarian, John Nord, that's with him against. And Bruiser Brody is there as well. I forgot this. I haven't seen this, and I'll bet you, I bet you I haven't watched this probably in the last 20 years. I probably only watched it twice after seeing it live because this was a historic event. Now, in a steel cage, it's Bruiser Brody. John Nord, Nord the Barbarian, and Sheik Adnan Al KC. What a sight. And I was just talking about Brody. I threw this on Raw Dog, guys, to get some content out there, to get some entertainment, and to keep you guys posted. And this is what we do. We do the live-to-tape watch-alongs with the current 2023 product. We do book reviews. We do flashbacks. We do watch-alongs. We do history here. We do comedy. We do movies and there's super fly Jimmy Snooker. Pehaoi, Melihini, Kane, Pupule, Wiki Wiki, Mahalo, and Aloha from Chaos Corner. And Greg Ganya. Does this turn out to be a six man tag? Brody, the Barbarian, John Nord, and Sheik Adnan against Vern Ganya, Snooker, and Greg Ganya? It wasn't on my notes. Again. Here we go. I'm always probably pride talking about the notes and doing your due diligence. I got to sit here and say myself. Uh, so do we watch this? Because I believe Vern and Greg Gagne and Snooker went over. And how does that even realistic over Brody and 
nor just those two, and then throw in the Sheik, who's a, a despicable, disgusting human being. I mean, this is like watching MJF and Adam Cole against Big Bill, Big Cass, and, and, and his partner, Brian Cage, uh, on Wednesday night for AEW Dynamite. Two huge monsters against one medium guy and one puny guy, and they won over the monsters. Now they're locking the cage here. Lee Marshall, Rod Trongard on the call. Uh, Gary Michael Capetta is your ring announcer. It's Russell Rock 86. 23,000 fans in Minnesota for the AWA. Last stadium show ever. Again, this is when the AWA was something. And this is, this is a tag team match. Nord the Barbarian Bruiser Brody against Greg Gagne and Jimmy Snuka. Adnan is on the outside as is Vern, but they're both in gear. Should we cover this? I, I maybe we should. Steel cage. All right, uh, Brody and Greg Gagne. Now listen, Brody six eight, three hundred twenty pounds. Greg Gagne, what uh, about five eleven, six feet, about uh, one hundred and eighty pounds. And Ganya now taking it to him, hitting him in the breadbasket with chops, and, and Brody really selling. And you know Brody wasn't big on selling. Look at the sheer size of 86 uh, of Nord the Barbarian and Bruiser Brody. And then throwing Snooker, and this is where, whether it's the Barbarian, Brody, or Superfly, they all do the hoo, 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 hoo. hoo. Now, Nord the Barbarians and slams Ganya like again, like he like he's a, a rag doll. And I'm glad that I, I chose this to do the retro review here this morning, because uh, again, uh, as you can see, whether it's Bachwinkle and Hanson, uh, not realizing that Hanson was still the champion, or right here this was a tag team match because I thought it was just Vern Ganya against Sheik Adnan, Al KC in the steel cage, because that's what I reported first when I went to the results. And even though I watched this, like I said, a handful of times, fuck, I am pushing 60, but don't win. come on, man, I'm sharp as a tack. Barbarian in there now with Snooker. Back and forth. Again, Snooker could hold his own with anyone, but this, to me, is a mismatch. And again, just the sheer madness of Bruiser Brody. I'm glad I picked this out and I'm able to review this for you guys because this is classic, unbelievable footage with Nord the Barbarian. Bruiser Brody, Snooker, and Greg Gagne, the tag team, Steel Cage, 86 Wrestle Rock, in front of 23,000. Brody in now on Snooker. Both Snooker and Nord the Barbarian in the corner. Now Snooker out of nowhere with a side headlock on Brody. Far side. Snooker off the ropes. Big shoulder block. Both men standing. Oh, Bruiser Brody with a leapfrog over Snooker. And then a big boot to the jib. Brody was amazing. And what that scumbag did down in Puerto Rico was unbelievable. He got away with it. But you'll kneel before your maker someday. And you'll answer for it. No matter what. Remember that. And I'm not judging anybody, but you know what happened. We all know what happened. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Brody's wife, uh, Barbara Goodish, uh, we follow each other on Facebook and have become friendly and, uh, you know, like each other's stuff and make comments. What a great lady Barbara is. And uh, from what I understand, I never met Bruiser Brody, uh, but a great guy, ornery guy, okay. But we know what the scumbag did down there, scumbags in Puerto Rico. Oh, reverse leapfrog by Snooker. Another leapfrog. Big chop. <laughs> Knife edge. But, uh, down goes Bruiser Brody. Snooker could hold his own against anybody in any era. Yeah, okay. Snooker was a wild man, a crazy man. You know my history with Snooker. Went against him and his son, myself and John Diamond, more than once. The superfly, brother. I know he's got his past, too, but I ain't here to judge. Snooker going to the top rope with a big fist to the forehead on Bruiser Brody. Never see too many people really take it to Brody. Or throughout the history, I know it was, you know, Abdullah or Carlito or someone like that back in the day. One of the Japanese uh, uh, strong style guys. Here's the tag. Here comes Nord the Barbarian on Snooker. And there's Vern Gagne, the crazy old coop, sitting outside. You know that he got into fisticuffs a couple years back in his 80s and actually took the life of another man in a retirement home. 
That's what I read and heard, and it was reported as facts. As Nord the Barbarian stops away on Snooker, Snooker from his knees trying to come back with chops, martial arts type shots, Fijian type shots, and knife edges and, and chops to the throat on the Barbarian. Greg Gagne in the corner trying to climb the cage. Double team, boot to the noggin, to the cranium, to the dumpster head of Nord the Barbarian. Gagne leaping off and then goes over and gives Brody a forearm smash. Brody didn't even feel it. Brody back in there, but look, Gagne throwing knife edges, punches out of nowhere, taking on both Brody and the Barbarian. What's going on here? King Kong Brody at the time, huh? So back to Vern Gagne. I guess he beat a man to death uh, in the home. Whether he was right, wrong, or indifferent, no one deserves to go out that way, but he's a tough old bastard, wasn't he? Right now, Nord the Barbarian and Brody taking over on Ganya and Superfly. Again, I, I didn't remember all this. We're 40 minutes in. This may go over an hour. Adnan Al KC outside right now, grabbing and holding on to the cage. Brody takes Ganya face first into the cage. Really, Tron Guard, a stainless steel cage? Is that what you're claiming it is here in 86? As we go back in the time machine on Chaos Corner, Brody just laying it in on Greg Gagne right now. And again, face first into the cage again. I'm sure Gagne is going to be busted open very soon, if he isn't already. Gagne is reeling, and he is. He's gushing now. He's Greg Gagne is busted open. Yeah, I know. It's a little corny. It's a little sticky. But I get it. Brody trying to set up. Looks like he's trying to set up Ganya for a pile driver here. What a sight to behold here on the video. He's got him up, holding him vertical. Is Brody going to get him? How's Ganya going to get out of this? Bang! There it goes. How that crushes all the vertebrae in your neck. This should be it. In my opinion, that should have been over. Bruiser Brody gives you a pile driver. I don't care who you are. It should be over. Don't you think? And there's the cover and Snooker breaks it up. Oh, okay, self-explanatory there. Again, it's all about storytelling, emotional investment, ring psychology. Not a lot here in the steel cage match. Ganya still trying to fight his way out against two behemoths. Just two huge men. Guys that look the part, are the part, live the part. Legit badasses. And Ganya really taking it to Nord the Barbarian right now. He's got to make a tag to Snooker. He's got to get the Superfly in there. And look as they panorama uh, view of, of the Metro Dome. They did, a, they did a nice job with this back in 86. As we hear the thunderstorms here early on the Friday morning. Last night it was the heavens were opened up. Nord face first into the cage by Greg Ganya. Nord the Barbarian. Both men on the canvas. Ganya's got to make the tag. Barbarian tags in Bruiser Brody first. Ganya tags Snooker. Here comes Snooker. It's Snooker and Brody again. Brody must have liked Snooker. And they must have liked each other because they both sold for each other. And you know their reputations. Going back and forth here, toe to toe, fist to fist. And now Snooker throws Brody face first into the cage. Now Snooker. Who? 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 Brody, it's busted open. Bang! Big headbutt by Snuka on Brody. Brody's on Queer Street. He has no idea where he is. Big chop. Down goes the big man. Snuka with the big body slam on Brody. Snuka was unbelievable. He's going to the top row. The high rent district. He's going to fly. You know this is his territory. There it is. And he hits him with the flying headbutt on Brody. Cover him. Pin him. Is this going to be it? No, here's the Barbarian to break it up. And Brody is definitely a crimson mask. Now Barbarian broke it up. Slam Snooker's lower back into the turnbuckle. The lower lumbar region. The third vertebrae. Barbarian, once again, runs across the ring. Opposite side. Slam Snooker into the turnbuckle. Which has been banned. Now the turnbuckle dropped. The turnbuckle tossed by AEW. Try to keep it current too, 2023. Brody is just gushing blood, which was his M.O. 
whether it be Japan, uh, Puerto Rico, the United States, all over the world. He finally makes a tag, and here comes Barbarian. He was in the ring already anyway. What a sight. Barbarian and Snooker in the ring now. Snooker's in big trouble after really laying it in on Brody. Double teaming him in the corner. Brody and Barbarian laying it in on Snooker. And here comes Greg Gagne out of nowhere. He's got to get the ref's going to try to get him out. The ref isn't much smaller than Greg Gagne. But Greg Gagne was full of piss and vinegar for a guy his size. All four men in the ring. Breaking down. Brody and Snooker. Barbarian has Gagne. Big forearm blows to the chest. Brody and Barbarian. Round and round. Dosi do. Knock a knocker. Brody and the Barbarian head first. Double drop kick by Snooker and Ganya and the Barbarian. Reeling in the corner. All four men in the middle of the cage. The only one I don't think is bleeding is Snooker. Going for the double vertical suplex on Brody. And they get it. Beautiful maneuver. Brody's in big trouble in the middle of the ring. Again, all four grapplers in the middle of the ring right now. Snooker up on the top rope. Barbarian has Ganya. What's Snooker going to do? Oh, he goes to leapfrog. No, I'm sorry. He goes for the flying body press. Barbarian out of the way. And he headbutts Ganya, his partner. Ganya is out and busted wide open again. Big clothesline by Barbarian on Snooker. Fans, stick with me here on the play-by-play. -play. I know I'm a little over the top, but this was something. You feel the emotion and the passion after all these years, right? I'm still available. Hire me. I'm semi-cheap. All four men still in the ring. Barbarian laying it in on Snooker right now. Ganya still on the bottom of the lightning flashing through Chaos Corner here. Snooker with the cover. Three count on Barbarian out of nowhere. Snooker and Ganya actually beat the Barbarian and Brody. But that's it. Brody and more of the Barbarian are going crazy right now. Pounding Ganya and Snooker. The cage has been unlocked. Greg Ganya's going to come in. I'm not out, KC. He's a disgusting, despicable human being. You hear the bell. I, 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 I'm not sure what happened, but Snooker, uh, it looked like a, a body press from the middle of the ring that pinned Nord the Barbarian. They got the, they got the, the free count. I can't believe it. Now they're out of the cage. Brody, Snooker, Ganya, Barbarian out in the middle of the Metrodome through the crowd brawling. Where is Greg Ganya and Adnan LKC? Do they get in the ring now? Do they get involved with this? They're really going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Listen to the crowd. Wow. Wrestle Rock 86. Steel Cage. They're going all the way back to the dressing room. Again, thousands of fans are laying around. Fans, should I break this up into a second part? We're 48 minutes into Wrestle Rock 86. And we have the Road Warriors and Freebirds, the classic steel cage coming coming up that I want to cover. But I may cover it in a, in a second clip solo by itself. And there's Vern Gagne. He's got Adnan LKC slamming him head first into the cage. This is what the fans were waiting for. Gagne is throwing in Adnan LKC. That's it. Vern, the old coot is inside the steel cage with Adnan LKC. I think he gets five minutes with him. Casey is trying to get out of there quick, man. He's trying to crawl, crawl, uh, climb over the cage, crawl over, whatever you want to say. No way. Ganya's got him. Pulling him down by the white robe. Now they're, wait, no. Wait. They're both climbing to the top rope. They're both going to the top of the cage. Ganya laying in the rights. Vern Ganya, the legend, the old man. I'm not Cal Casey busting open, bleeding like a crimson mask. Vern Ganya beating him from pillar to post. Ghost to ghost. Wrestle Rock 86. The AWA, Chaos Corner. Ganya going to town on the Sheik. Fans, come on back. We got the big one, the main event, the Road Warriors and the fabulous Freebirds in the Steel Cage. We're 50 minutes in here. Come on back. You're not going to want to miss this one. Oh, he's, Ganya's whipping at non LKC with the belt. All right, fans, don't go anywhere. Come back for the main event, the big one. Don't you dare miss it.